Welcome to our lecture on 1950s fashions. So as you can see on the cover, um, I stated fashion conformity prevails. So what that means is that conformity, dressing the same, was really big in this time. And as you can see, this picture where you kind of have this matching look, um, obviously the same material, just using kind of different garments for the whole entire family. This was really big for the 1950s, um, dressing together as a family. The equivalent today is when you see people on social media with the matching pajamas, you're going to see how the silhouette is pretty much matching all around. And then you're going to start seeing people straying from um, the, the masses and, and mass conformity. So what do you need to know about the 50s that had an influence in dress? So one is the economic boom. Because the war is over, um, we didn't have our war in our soil, right? Uh, you don't count you know, Pearl Harbor, but other than that, it wasn't on our soil. So the U.S. was able to restructure much faster than Europe. And since the main income providers who were fighting in the war came back, uh, some, uh, some women stayed working. So now you had two, two incomes and others, they went back home and they could live off just fine with one income. Um, as you know, the, the economy is cyclical. It goes up, it goes down, it was down, and then it went up. So this was really big for the economy, a really big boom, um, and this really brought in the suburban lifestyle. So the idea was family. The focus was the family life, having the wife and the husband and the kids and the white picket fence, your house, your car, um, you had your dog, you had your yard. That was like the, the American dream, right? And you had your job. So that was the focus. The focus was on family. They came up with the term burbs, uh, living in the burbs, which uh, basically living in the suburbs. So you live further away, you have a bigger house, and then commute to work. And because it meant, you know, doing things like yard work, um, doing work around the house, it required, and because of the economic boom, again, the better the economy, the more leisure activities take place. That leads to more informal dress. In other words, more casual. And I keep telling you that, right? The, the movement is more casual. Then this is where we have a boom in sportswear, not the invention of sportswear. The boom in sportswear was at this time frame. There was a baby boom because when the soldiers came back, they were raring to go, and nine months later, all the nurseries were just jam-packed, so that's why the birth of the baby boomers, because there's so many of them. And this created the need for shopping centers, having multiple stores all next to each other, adds convenience, and easy to care for pap fabrics. The idea that you can wear it, it can get dirty, stained, you can throw it in the wash, throw it in the dryer, and you're good to go. One thing that you're probably not used to is that television was huge. Uh, television shows were very influential. Leave it to Beaver, Ozzie and Harriet, Life with Father. Television was the primary source of entertainment, and television was the primary source of news for all households uh, at this point. Um, those that could get the television set, once they got it, that was the primary source of information. Um, so the American dream was becoming a reality for many people. Uh, women were tired of their, you know, after years and years of the same silhouette and the same rationing, they really got tired of it. Um, teenagers got tired of wearing exactly what, you know, their moms were wearing, and they finally realized, the fashion industry realized, huh, the teenagers don't want to dress like their parents and they don't want to dress like little kids, boom. And that is the birth of the junior market. Um, and that ends up being very lucrative. So when this happens, this is where we're going to start seeing, as you'll see, a shift. And it's going to start going away. It starts off with the focus on the family. It goes away and it goes into the focus on the youth. So 1950s, the main silhouette, hourglass. Hourglass, hourglass. That's all you need to know. Hour, well, no, you need to know more. But the main thing is hourglass. Sloped shoulders, nipped, tiny waist, and a full skirt with rounded hips. That is the main Marilyn Monroe, curvy shape. That was the ideal for the 1950s. Another thing that was big in the 50s, believe it or not, and a lot of people attribute these kind of cool, groovy prints, far out prints, groovy prints with the 60s. Um, actually, they started in the 50s. So these prints that I'm showing you are from the 1950s. Um, as you can see, they're really kind of 
have that psychedelic kind of feel to it, but these all are from the 50s. Looking into the future, they were really big on the space exploration program. Walt Disney really tapped into this with like Tomorrowland at Disneyland, um, really looking at spaceships and, you know, um, they were really big on NASA and, you know, landing on the moon and um, the space exploration when they had shuttles being released and all that kind of stuff. Car culture, you didn't really think about your car. Most people couldn't afford it before this, and now more people can afford a car. So now the kind of car you're driving matters. Um, and we're seeing more traffic on the freeway because the growth of suburbia. That means more people are living in the suburbs and driving into the city for their job. So the family's back together because your main income provider's back, which is important. And, uh, you know, You'll see a lot of pictures where you're wearing the apron, you're cooking things from scratch, the kids are there to greet the daddy at, you know, at the door when he comes home. So this was what was typically considered the ideal um, in this time. Um, also modern furniture, and I say modern at that time, we now call it mid-century, but it looks really dated as you can see, it, but it's very minimalist. You see it kind of very geometric, and it's funny because now we have, we've had furniture that looks like this. Um, but this was considered the, you know, the ultimate trend in appliances and furniture. It had a very geometric uh, look to it and a lot of bright colors. You see a lot of yellow. So if you hear a lot of houses from the 50s, you'll see a lot of like yellow tile or red. It was very characteristic. So this teal green. Gotta love that teal green on furniture and walls. Um, so as we notice that as more Americans are moving to the, sub the, su the suburbs, there needs to be more manual work, right? For the yard, for cleaning the house, doing leisure activities, going to the community pool, that kind of stuff. So that means they need more casual clothes. So it starts that trend, it just keeps going. More casual, more casual, more casual. So you'll see more shorts, um, shorter skirts, slightly shorter, more lightweight, uh, more short sleeve, sleeveless tops, um, crop pants, and more comfortable shoes you can walk in. Um, finishes. Um, so we start seeing the use of chemicals to make um, laundry a little bit easier and more functional. So we start seeing polyester and acrylic being used. Um, finishes to help, you know, wrinkle release. So what used to be called wash and wear, we now consider it permanent press. But the idea is that you can wash it and then put in the dryer and it'll, it won't have wrinkles. So it'll have a chemical finish to keep the, the shirt from wrinkling so much and using heat to release those wrinkles or the steam. So uh, that's really big at this time. So permanent press, because the need was, you know, you had the main income provider dressing up in suits and in shirts, but it needs, you know, it needs to be washable and wearable. So television was huge. So television shows had a huge impact so I Love Lucy was really big. If you've never seen an episode, they have it on cable. You should check it out. But I Love Lucy was very influential uh, with clothing. You, they, the costume designers really paid attention to, you know, the hats and the gloves and the, the shoes. I mean, I always noticed that. It was just like everything matched just so. So Leave It to Beaver and, and Ozzy and Harriet and all these shows, again, very heavily influential when it comes to um, trends and how people look and expected kind of family life to be, you know. But you start seeing this shift. Okay, so it went from so it's going to go from this focus on family to now a focus on younger people, and we start seeing it in the 60s. It explodes in the 60s, but you see it in the 50s. So you know when you see them hula hooping and dancing, and you do see this kind of rebellious um, turn. Um, you do see that. Now Paris does keep its kind of title of you know we're key to fashion, but Italy and London become more important. Um, these uh, Italian designers and British designers start getting more attention. And this, in the 50s, is where we get American designers getting international acclaim. They were getting national acclaim in the 40s because of the war, but in the 50s, they got international attention. And that's where the rest of the world started paying attention to American fashion. One of the areas they helped as well was maternity, believe it or not, because, again, the baby boom, so many women were pregnant, they needed clothing that was fashionable and yet was appropriate for being pregnant. So maternity styles became more fashionable because before they weren't considered fashionable at all. Bathing suits and going to the beach, again, leisure was popular. 
A lot of people think 50s, the bikinis were huge, not in the U.S. They appeared in Europe. They weren't as well accepted early in the 50s. It wasn't towards until basically the end, going towards the end, um, that the, the actual bikini became really popular. Um, what was popular, in particular in the first part of the 50s, was these kind of mother-daughter kind of matching sets were really popular. Again, because the focus was the family, right? But then slowly as we start going, uh, you start seeing more vampy, you know, the cat eye, the wing, you know, the, the, um, you know, the really vampy eye with the eyeliner, the cat eye um, kind of look, the, the bold eyebrow, uh, bold lip lipstick. Um, so the Marilyn Monroe type, you know, the bombshell um, became popular. Movie stars didn't lose their glamour. They were still just as glamorous in the 50s that they were previously and huge influences. What's interesting about the 50s, though, is that you did have this wide spectrum and variety of, of leading ladies. You know, you had Liz Taylor, Audrey Hepburn, um, you know, Marilyn Monroe. And, I mean, there's a huge difference. Marilyn Monroe was all curvy, all, you know, bombshell, sex appeal. And Audrey Hepburn was just like the sophisticated, young, very thin, very petite, um, not curvy at all. She's very petite, very thin. Um, so very different type of beauty, and yet both were regarded as very beautiful, um, beautiful women. Uh, Grace Kelly, also very beautiful. I just saw a movie, To Catch a Thief, um, and she was just beautiful. So because the rationing ends, and they can use all this fabric, full skirts are just, that's the everyday thing. So a lot of fabric there. You start seeing a lot more short sleeve um, options. Uh, Paris dresses, they still look to Paris, particularly for dresses and evening wear, and just beautiful on the fullness and draping. They did a wonderful job. But see, you start seeing more playful prints in the 50s. They really played with prints. Um, now, to get the fullness of the skirt, you did need to wear a crinoline underneath. So your undergarments were really important. Now, in the 50s, um, undergarments weren't to keep you flat. The idea was a bigger bust, so some of them were pointy, and give you an uplift. So this time it's really about support. Girdles allowed for you to have a flatter stomach and a rounded hip. So that's how they were designed. They all had garters because you still wore, wore a lot of hosiery. But the idea is more lift and having the bra give you um, an, a padded look. A uh, waist cincher or a long line brassiere called the Merry Widow was the idea of a tiny waist and helping round off the hips. And a lot of them had padded cuffs to give you a larger chest. And again, to get that fullness of the skirt, these very starched petticoats you put underneath to give you that fullness. Because you can have a lot of fabric, but it would still lay somewhat flat. You needed this petticoat underneath so that you have that fullness on your skirt. Okay, um, Because they developed nylon um, and used more elastics in yarns, what this did was allow to give you a lighter weight undergarment with good support, good control, and definitely much more comfortable. Than, than the corset of the previous time. Not comfortable like Spanx, but comfortable, okay? And because the skirts were full, that meant the coat had to be short or long and fitted. It had to accommodate the, the full skirt. So they did have to change the coat silhouette a little bit. And even though they did have some evening gowns that were long, most evening gowns in the 50s were short, strapless, and full skirted, okay? So most of them did have that. There were some that were long, like this, just not a lot. Millinery, which is the um, industry for hats, very popular, as you can see. Also brooches, medium, shoulder length hair, some short hair, medium length hair was very popular. Long, long, long hair was not popular, but hats were. And these were heels, definitely were popular. Um, flats became popular as well. Some Mary Janes and some saddle shoes uh, for the youth. Um, popular accessories, so handbags, brooches, the cat eye sunglasses, gloves, and your gloves would match your handbag and oftentimes would also match your shoes. And the idea was that we ended up getting these dramatic changes for the women's to, to the mid 50s. So, the middle of that decade, all of a sudden you just saw this loose fit. Um, this came from the Balenciaga commercial. Uh, a line in 1955 um, and Dior. Dior also, you know, he came up with a new look and he kind of expanded a little bit on it. But the looser fit, this kind of looser, like a shift 
uh, silhouette, kind of baggy, um, chemise-like um, look. The trapeze look came in popular towards the middle and late 50s. This is just different from that tiny, tiny waist and full, full skirt. So the trapeze and chemise um, look were really popular. Uh, that concludes our part one for our uh, look for the 1950s.